exciting ESPN NASCAR action from Talladega. Now coming up later today at 5 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2 for the second time this season, the NHRA travels to the Texas Motorplex for the Revell National. Defending champions include top fuel Gary Skelsey and funny card John Force, both going for their third straight win at the Motorplex. The Revell National today at 5 Eastern time only on ESPN2. For more, log on to ESPN.com, a part of the Go Network, go.com. Let's check in the pits. I think Bill Weber is caught up with Jerry Nadeau. And I saw a brief smile from Jerry Nadeau. Tough to do. Wild ride for you. What happened? Not really sure. I mean, I, I noticed there was a few guys. I think they went four wide and somebody dropped it on the bottom. And uh, somebody got into the nine car and sent him up the racetrack. And I was behind the car that he hit. And I slowed it down good enough, but I got popped from behind. And there ain't much you can do when you get in a situation like that. I mean, I feel bad for these M&M's Pontiac team. I mean, this is a good race car. I can go racing again. It's just I feel bad for these guys. They got to work on this race car. Yeah, you roasted some of those M&Ms out there too, didn't you? Yeah, I tell you what, it got damn hot quick in that car. And uh, while the car was rolling, I was actually getting out of the race car, and I got hit from behind. So uh, luckily enough, uh, when I got turned around, the wind took the flames the other way and, and kept off my leg. But uh, I'm okay. Okay. Jerry Nadeau says he's okay. Very disappointed. To John Kernan. Sterling Marlin just came down pit road moments ago. They, he was one of the cars that took on four tires instead of just two on my end of pit road. They had some lug nuts loose on the left side. He felt the vibration, came in. They tightened those lug nuts, sent him back on his way, but it dropped him way back to the 33rd spot. Bobby Labonte, who came into the pits leading, is now in the third position. Had a little problem getting out of his pits because Sterling was pitted in front of him. But the big story there is Jimmy Maycar changed his mind at the last minute. They were going to take on four tires, but he decided not to give up track position because he anticipated the moves of some of these other teams of taking on only right side tires. So right before Bobby pulled into the pit stall, Jimmy Maycar said no, two tires, two tires only to Ray Dunlap. Well, John, it was a gamble for Elliott Sadler. They took on right side tires only, but what a move they made. Started 34th today. They were running 23rd whenever the caution came out, and right now they are currently eighth place, so they've really made a big move by taking on two tires only. As I told you, Earnhardt took on four. He only lost two positions, but Chad Little may have been the big loser on that round of pit stops. He came in in 17th place, has a problem with the transmission, tried to take two tires, but stalled the car, and he has dropped way back to the end, like 35th or 36th. Now let's go to Bill Weber. With a disappointed Johnny Benson, who uh, had worked his way close to the top 10, and then you got in the middle of this. What happened? I'm not sure. I mean, I, I heard four wide on the radio, and I knew that couldn't be too good getting into the corners. So um, you can get away with that in the straightaways, just not in corners. And it's, I don't know, somebody got squirrely, and in a minute that happens, you're going to hit somebody. In a minute it hits, it gets a chain reaction. And, uh, you know, then after that point in time, I got hit in the left rear and spun out. Okay. Johnny Benson, he's okay, but his car certainly in a very bad shape in the NASCAR Winston Cup garage. Under caution at Talladega. We'll be right back. at Talladega Super Speedway. Perfect timing. We get set for the restart here after two caution flags. The latest involving six cars. And one reason you see the car so high on this restart, under NASCAR List of Cup rules, you can only pass on the right-hand side on the restart. So all these guys protecting that outside. The car passes on the inside NASCAR with black flag that car. So everybody has to run high protect that outside. That is until they get to the start-finish line. Once they get to the start-finish line, then they can uh, make a pass. As we just saw, is that not the wall? Dope to the inside of the pass, but that was okay. We are five laps away from the halfway point. Jeff Gordon, DuPont Chevrolet, two consecutive wins, trying to go for three in a row. Unbeaten streak, string continuing for Brian Weitzel. Tony Stewart in second spot. Tony's teammate, Bobby Labonte back in third. A pair of Joe Gibbs Pontiacs chomping away at the back of Jeff Gordon Chevy. Mike Kerr, 12 cars there. Content just to run a single foul here for the moment, which is a smart thing to do. Bobby Labonte on his 
inside of his teammate. Earnhardt says, "Okay, buddy, I'm going with you." And look at Paul Tony Stewart. He has no one. I mean, no one to draft with. Maybe he can find a fly or something back there. <laughs> Well, Bill Elliott's made a move. He's now in 12th position, being way at the back of the pack in 38th to 40th spot. He's made a move up toward the top 15. There's the 94 car, McDonald's Ford. But now he is slipping backwards as Kyle Petty in the Hot Wheels. Pontiac goes by. Kenny Schrader, Kenny Irwin. Kyle Petty was a benefactor of that caution because he was running about seven or eight seconds. He and a pack of cars running about seven or eight seconds behind the leader. Then he came in, apparently just took on two tires, and he's right up there now in 15th position. Joe Nemechek, the Bell South Chevy, just drives right by. Bill Elliott. And taking a look back at Bill Elliott there from Nemechek's rear bumper cam. Big space between Bill Elliott and the next car. That would be the 10 car of Ricky Rudder outside pole center back to the front. Earnhardt about to get shuffled back as Tony Stewart trying to get on some help with Jeremy Mayfield to get by Earnhardt. Jeremy gets by. Jeremy, one of the drivers going for the million dollar bonus here. Five one up. Five drivers have a chance at a million dollar bonus and five selected fans cheering for their individual driver. If their driver wins, they become an instant millionaire. It's happened three times thus far. Oh, boy. Well, Michael Walter has got himself ahead of steam. Uh-huh. And he's aggressive with it. There's where the Noble Five drivers are running. Mayfield in third. Burton. Oh, he's being shuffled back now as we speak. Steve Park, Jeff Burton, Terry Labonte, Rusty Wallace, all these guys in the middle of a three wide. Meanwhile, back at the front, battle for the lead. Here's Bobby Labonte on the inside with him. And Jeff Burton on the outside with him. And he prevailed. How about Elliott Sadler in the Sitco car? Give a call to the Wood Brothers team. Sadler right in there, tucked in behind the car number three of Dale Earnhardt. Gordon Wall at the top of the racetrack, down across the bottom. We knew yesterday in happy hour he had a good race car because he practiced some of those moves. He could go anywhere he wanted to with that. Still working that good today. Seventeen cars in that lead draft. Bobby Hamilton sliding backwards, got way up on the outside of turn two. Had to back out and gather it back in. He's now at the very tail end of that draft. Gordon, Labonte, Mayfield, and Waltrip, along with Mike Skinner on the bottom side. Earnhardt leading the high side draft in front of Elliott Sadler and Ward Burton. And uh, there is at Talladega always a lot of spotter communications among drivers. We're going to show you in our NASCAR Winston Cup Spotlight how it works with the 88 car. Yeah, he said it's pretty bad. Boy, the spirit of cooperation then, it's very, very important because the number one priority in all these guys' minds is safety. Yes, it is, but the rub is not hurting his speed. About four laps ago, DJ and Ricky Rudd 
were five and a half seconds behind the leader. When they went by this last time, they were one second behind. And I mentioned Ricky Rudd it has a Robert Yates engine in that tied Ford because, of course, he will be driving the 28 car for Yates next year. They're almost on the bottom of the racetrack, Benny, but they're staying together. Trying to stay together and work their way towards the front. And I'm surprised at the rubber debris that's coming off the track. That was the bits of rubber we saw on the lens of the onboard camera on top of the Ford Quality Care roof. I don't see too much there, but there aren't supposed to be too much rubber coming off on the straightaway. It's only in the corner that you're supposed to wear the tire. got away from DJ. Ricky has a good fast race car. He's qualified on the outside pole. That was very evident that he had a good fast race car. And one of that rug is haven't seen any smoke yet. And maybe it was when the tires were brand new. And uh, sometimes you go into a corner and, and while they're sticking real good, the body will, will uh, lean over just a little bit and you get a little bit of a rub. And then after they run a couple of laps and the, the, they don't stick quite as good, then and the air, the air pressure air builds up. Well, then uh, that takes that away. You don't get as much flex in the sidewall. Maybe that's why it's not Very good point, Dan. Jeff Gordon showing the way. Now Skinner in second spot. Joe Nemechek is third. Kenny Irwin. Earnhardt falls back in the fifth spot. Michael Waltrip. Kenny Schrader coming back to play. And the soul Chevrolet. Bottom line, shuffling toward the front. 22 cars. Separated by 1.87 seconds. That's how close it is from first to 22nd as we are past the halfway at Talladega. <laughs> 